Einstein famously said, our problems cannot be solved using the thinking that created them. We must see the world anew. I'd like to share an idea with you today that I believe can change how you see, think about, and make sense of the world. I believe that this idea is the most important and consequential paradigm shift in human history. From the earth being flat to it being round, and from the idea that foul odors cause disease to the idea that germs do. From the idea of the precision and certainty of classical physics to the weirdness and unpredictability of quantum physics. The idea that I'd like to share is the idea from seeing differences to seeing distance. We are not now, nor have we ever been divided by differences. Despite what we've heard, despite what our eyes tell us, there is nothing between you and I but space. In order to show this paradigm, I'm going to ask you to play a game and solve a puzzle. If I can have each of you right now reach down and grab your metaphorical pencil, so you grab the pencil, then I need you to hold that pencil up so I will know that you have it. Here's the game. I need you to connect all nine dots with four straight lines. Now, here's the catch before you go too soon. Once you put your pencil on the paper, you may not pick it up. Four straight lines connect all nine dots. Once you start, you may not pick it up. This is actually very simple. The idea is staring you right in the face. When we finish, we'll talk about what makes this so difficult for you, me, and most people. All right, I know right now that a whole lot of you got this right. Probably not. It's about one out of ten. Let me show you the answer because, again, I said that it was simple. What was the challenge for all of us who struggled to get it right versus those individuals in here who did get it right? What caused the issue? What caused the problem? And of course, what I always hear is that we were constrained, that we saw lines, that we couldn't go outside the lines. It's your fault. You didn't give us the instructions properly. Well, here's what I know about human beings. Almost everyone in this room looked up there and saw this. We saw lines and a box that did not exist that kept us from seeing what was there, which was a solution to our problem. People will frequently say, we didn't think outside the box. In fact, if you Google this puzzle, not only will you find it under the nine dot puzzle, but you will also find it under seeing outside the box. That's wrong. And here's the reason why it's wrong. Because there is no and there was no box, yet almost everyone in this room and everyone that you know will see that same box every single time. The lines that we see dictate where we can and can't go. The lines that we see tell us who we are and who they are. The lines that we see tell us who we can love and who we cannot love. And none of those lines are there either. We human beings are line drawers. And we draw lines so that we can understand and make sense of the world. But the lines are not there. The lines that we see keep us from finding solutions that are at hand. Solutions that are right there in front of us. We cannot see them because of how we see the world. One particular place that we draw lots of lines is between ourselves and other people. Take a look at some of the lines that we draw as human beings. We draw lines of ethnicity and religion and race and generation. We draw lots and lots of lines, and of course we again believe that they are real. 
Let's take a look at us drawing lines. Where do you draw the line for who is and is not black? Do you draw it with skin color? Do you draw it with any known African ancestry, also known as the one drop rule? Do you draw it at self-identification? If I identify myself as black, does, does that make me black? For those of you who have taken DNA tests, if you have any percentage of your ancestry that now says it is sub-Saharan African, are you black? The point is not to argue about where we draw lines. This is not a debate, but the truth is, all of the lines that we see, we draw. Nature does not draw the lines of our difference. The greatest silent boomers, Gen Xers, millennials, and whatever this new thing is, <laughs> all lines that we draw. Were there generations before 1900? And if not, why not? We draw lines. And those lines come back to haunt us in poor relationships, inability to connect to our fellow human beings, and some of the very major and massive problems that we now face as human beings on this planet. The problem is not that we draw lines. The problem is not that we see lines. It's how we organize ourselves. It is how we, it helps with survival. Lines are necessary. Without lines, it would just be a mass of energy out there, and we would understand nothing about our planet that allows us to move forward. The problem is that the lines that we draw, we believe that they are real. Because we believe the lines are real, because we believe that the boxes we put people in are real, we cannot connect to our fellow human beings. We literally have been taught, and our eyes tell us this, that I cannot talk to you because of some line because of some difference. In order to connect with you as a human being, I have to understand this difference. I have to appreciate this, di this difference. I don't. Those differences are not real. They are made up. Let us consider seeing the world anew. Let us think about how else we might perceive ourselves as human beings on this planet. If not lines, what? Jax and Reddy are two inseparable five-year-old boys. Best friends. Jack's mother has a problem because his hair is starting to be a little bit too long. And Jack's being one of those kids who loves to play pranks, decides that since he has to get a haircut, he may as well play a trick on his teacher. Jax decides to do, and of course he gets his mother to cooperate in this nefarious scheme, is to get his haircut like his friend Reddy so that his teacher will not be able to tell them apart. <laughs> This should answer for everybody the question, do children see differences? Well, of course they do. But children don't see lines. All of us are born hardwired to connect. That is the natural state of being for all of us as human beings. It is what we do as children. Because we can't take care of ourselves, connecting is the most important thing that we do. It is who we are. We are hardwired to do that. Your children, my children, my grandchildren would literally connect to anything or at least explore the possibilities of doing so. What we know as parents and what other caregivers know is that is dangerous for children. And so we can't let them just explore, explore, explore. We have to tell them where they can and cannot and should not connect. So we start drawing lines. 
The fact that we as parents draw lines again is not the problem. It is not a bad thing. When it becomes problematic, it's because we believe that those categories we use to sort human beings are real. And then we believe that in order to see another human being, I have to think about the category first. I do not. When I think about the category before I think about you, I see you as an object. I don't connect to objects. All of us have the God-given ability to connect to others through our natural intelligence and through emotional intelligence. And yet it is cut off when we're looking at the box. It is cut off when we're seeing differences. When parents want to keep children safe, they need children to be able to do some of the work themselves. And that work we need our children to do is to create distance and space between themselves and others. So when we're drawing lines, we're also telling stories. And those stories are to make sure that our children, when certain differences are seen, triggers a response that says, be cautious, stay away from, back away from, do not approach, do not explore. Well, that makes sense for five-year-olds and six-year-olds, but at some point in time, it becomes very detrimental to all of us as human beings. Because now we see people at the workplace, now we see people on the streets that we could have a relationship with. But right now we're thinking we can't because of something that we see. If we think about our hunter-gatherer ancestors, it made sense that distance was really important. From across the valley, we could see another band of hunters. And from there, stay physically safe, be capable of running fighting or hiding. We literally do the same thing when we teach our children about distance. We teach our children to put space between you and other people. For us a long time ago, space was physical. But now that we live in each other's midst, our space, the distance that we create between ourselves and others is not physical, it's emotional. We literally could sit right next to somebody on a bus or work next to them or live next to them and be as far away from them as those folks might have been from somebody across the valley. In order for us to change, we have to understand that what we are dealing with is space and distance. And the way we move forward becomes critical at that point in time. But we have to see that. Here's what I would want you to see and recognize that at all times, distance is all that separates us. Between me and you and you and every other human being on the planet, there is only air and opportunity. Whether you speak the same language or worship the same God, it does not matter. You do not need to know about their differences. You do not need to see them as one of them. All you need to do is put one foot in front of the other and move forward. Everybody in here has that ability and every one of us can do that all the times. Now we know that we won't do it all the times and that's okay, but, but here's a model, here's a way of thinking about this. First, recognizing that there's nothing in front of me but air and opportunity, the first thing that I have to be able to do is to see the relationship. And to see the relationship, I don't mean with my eyes necessarily, because that brings me back to thinking about the differences. That brings me back to thinking about what I see. When I say see the relationships, I'm really talking about our ability to sense it. When you walk into a room and you see somebody that you do not know, you are sensing a relationship. And how do you sense it? You literally feel it. What is it that you feel? I feel anxious. I feel a little bit afraid. I feel a little bit angry. That is emotional distance. And it is that thing that we can all move forward on it. Sense that relationship. Once you sense it, now we have a choice to make. And the choice is always simple. I react to difference. That's not a bad thing. It's a smart thing. It's a thing that helps us all survive. But I respond to distance. Once I know that I can move forward, then the choice becomes mine of whether or not 
to move forward. For each and every one of you, when you are encountering people and you want to make a difference on the planet, make a difference in somebody else's life, do something exceptional, you're always faced with that choice. Should I move toward them or should I choose to stay where I am? The choice to move forward is a choice that requires courage. It requires that we become vulnerable. It requires that we become our authentic selves. It requires that we expose the fact that we're still hardwired to connect. And you do that, again, by putting one foot in front of the other and moving toward them. The great thing about moving toward others is that it demonstrates to them that you are a person who might be trustworthy. Sometimes we will elect because we don't have time, and sometimes maybe the situation is really scary. We will elect not to do it. You don't need to consider yourself a failure because you decided not to respond by moving forward. It is something that you might do next week or five years from now, but it will every time you experience that, you will be able to make that choice. Should I speak? Should I acknowledge? Should I see? Should I ask questions? Should I move forward? And our last piece of this model is to act. Once you recognize and once you've made the choice, the truth is everyone in this room has the behaviors, you have the skill set, and you have the capacity to move forward and do this right now. But just a couple of the brief things that you would do when you're acting intentionally is that you would seek to know them, that you would be curious as to who they are. You would recognize the huge difference between knowing about somebody and knowing them. You would see them, you would make eye contact, you would listen, you would move toward them. All of us have the ability at all times to do those things. My challenge to all of you is to seek to create a world with more connections is to seek to expose your humanity to others so that they might in turn do that for you. The major and massive problems that we face as human beings, climate change, all kinds of disparities, None of them can be solved using the old paradigm. As long as we are in conflict because of lines that do not exist and use those lines that do not exist to propose solutions that simply can never work, the world cannot change. It's only by getting outside of that paradigm and beginning to see the unity of all humanity, recognizing that we all are one, and that we can move closer to that idea. No, we do that by seeing the world anew. And with that, I thank you.